Kenya's government has opened a criminal investigation into the activities of a digital company that had members of the public flocking to sign up for its project. Worldcoin says it's building a kind of digital identity network, and to do that, it needs people's biometric information. But critics have raised questions over the safety and protection of the data being harvested, and frankly, whether this isn't simply something dodgy. DW correspondent Edith Kamani has visited Worldcoin's biometric exercise in Nairobi and sent us this report. When Worldcoin launched their activities in Kenya, the response seemed incomprehensible. Long queues formed day after day at registration points as thousands waited to have their irises scanned, a way to authenticate their identity and enable them to use the digital currency. I have some confidence and uh, some part of that is that there seems to be some level of management from the owners of the coin. You see, everyone who is being given the coins, they are not maturing at the same, t at the same time. You see, when they, when they mature at the same time, everyone sells and that will flood it in the market, reducing its value. However, most of those we spoke to were here simply for money. In Kenya, the tech company was offering free digital tokens to everyone who registered, and those tokens could then quickly be exchanged for $49 at a black market right outside the registration point, a saving grace for many. There's no money, that's the first thing. There's no work. People are struggling out here. The cost of living has gone up. Whatever you make is just not enough. Critics have raised concerns about the manner in which consumer consent was obtained, questioning whether it bordered on inducement, something WorldCoin denies. The user has full control, full access to their data and full ownership of their data. And WorldUp actually enables zero app tracking. It ensures that you're, there's no data leakage and that you're not being tracked across multiple applications as you browse through the internet. For Africans specifically, the concern from critics has been crypto-colonialism, a phrase used to describe the use of the most vulnerable people in the world as guinea pigs for emerging technologies and systems. Indeed, most of the people we spoke to do not understand blockchain technology or even what the data they were sharing could be used for. WorldCoin responded to the suspension in Kenya, saying it would take the time to work with authorities to boost understanding of privacy measures. This even as legislators call for stronger implementation of data laws in the country. Let's speak to Bright Gameli Maudo, a Kenyan-based cybersecurity specialist currently with Mara Wallet, which is also in the crypto space. He joins us from Nairobi. Bright, good to have you on the program. Um, there's been a lot of criticism of this world coin uh, issue, but also we've seen the, the long queues. Is this something people should be concerned about? Uh, in my own opinion, I think people should be concerned about it because there's so many questions that we're trying to answer when it comes to WorldCoin. Um, first of all, we're only hearing about WorldCoin right now, but if you get to know, um, like in Kenya, WorldCoin has been running for about more than a year and a half right now. Um, so the privacy concerns are coming, and this is when now WorldCoin is trying to update people on that, and it's still not clear exactly what they're trying to do with the scanning of iris or the facial recognition details. Um, the conversation is saying that they want to actually have a world digital ID uh, but the thing is where are we going to use it what are you what are the use cases in which countries are they going to be able to have a digital ID to be used is a government aware that we're going to have a, um, such a digital ID have they actually sanctioned or have they been accepted uh, to be able to have to collect such details those are the concerns that we are having when it comes to world coin and initiative that is happening Right. There, there's some people, apart from, you know, the ones we've heard about who, who queue and, you know, they're, they're, they're doing this because they'll get some monetary benefit out of this. There are other, some people, even among those, or, or generally other people who would just say, you know, they're too insignificant um, in the global sphere, sphere of things and don't have to worry about their personal data um, because, you know, what, what does it matter if someone takes their data? Yeah, I mean, it's also, look, there's there's a lot of uh, awareness that we don't have. Majority of the country, let me say more than half the country, don't understand what privacy means or what is what privacy means to them. Um, but you see, if, if you go the right proper direction, if you take your fingerprint, for example, for the airport, you are actually using that because you, you need those details and it, they have been approved uh, by the government to be able to actually collect that detail. Why? Because 
you could be a terrorist, you could be flying to another country where you still need that fingerprint to authenticate to know who is you. Now here, if somebody is giving you in Kenya shilling 7,000, which is like $40, nobody actually get to understand. They'll be like, look, I don't really care. Look at the poverty rate that we have right now. Look at the people who are going to like queue for, for WorldCoin. It's not the typical person who um, is doing a nine to five. It's people who don't have them the means on end and 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 giving them about 40 45 dollars is free money they're like wait you want to take a picture of my face or my iris just for that money i mean why not i'll do it um so that that became a kind of a controversial aspect of things where people are not sure because to them it's not a privacy problem because they're not aware and we have not done enough awareness on privacy issues in the country or in the continent to say actually do, do we? Do you think there's a risk of this kind of thing exploding in Africa, where more people's data is mined and possibly exploited? Yes, we have seen data being exploited in the past. Data has been mined in the past. We've seen a lot of uh, cybersecurity issues where uh, data has been exfiltrated. We've seen mobile networks being able to exfiltrate data to the countries that we're not supposed to that are not supposed to have the data. We have seen uh, organizations come and breach our data, um, our, our data sovereignty, uh, and, and be able to take our data that we don't even know. What are they doing with that data? We have no idea. Now, the thing is, this could be used for a bigger project. Um, like for the example, this work and could be used for a bigger project that we are not aware of. Um, there are too many questions and anomalies. You see, if, if it was very transparent from the very beginning, this would have been a, a thing that a year or two ago would have been explained saying this is what we're trying to do. Why is it that right now is when we're trying to understand that this is for a world ID? This was not the conversation that was brought out at the beginning. WorldCoin, uh, as we mentioned, is is in the Chris crypto sphere. Um, I mean, you, you work with the Mara Wallet as well. The, the, the blockchain and crypto scene seems to be uh, burgeoning or seems to be quite popular in, in Africa specifically. Why, why is that? I mean, there, there's so many benefits of cryptocurrency, and I think uh, there's a lot of blockchain solutions that can help to do with security. Um, I mean, for example, right now, if I want to buy land, um, I have to go through so many lawyers, have to go through so many people to sign a lot of documents. Now, with blockchain, um, as a computer code is able to actually ver verify the details of my land title deed before I'll, I'll be able to pass it on from one person to the other. We call that smart contract. If you look at payments right now, um, I mean, if you go to another country like uh, Ethiopia, for example, I have to swipe my, my my debit card on almost four machines just to get to be able to actually make payments. Now, if that doesn't work, it becomes very difficult to do business there. So cross-border payments uh, and the like can be done with cryptocurrencies, especially stable coins. Uh, for example, what we call stable coin like a USDC can help you and it's regulated. So the benefits of cryptocurrencies are there. There are so many other scams though, which are happening as well because a lot of awareness is not being done. Um, and there's also a lot of people who are trying to just transition. It's a transition of technology and, uh, and knowledge base that we're trying to see right now. And that's something like Mara we're trying to do. We're trying to make it easy for people to be able to build on a blockchain very easy when it comes to software development, uh, businesses to be able to build on the blockchain, and we should have able to actually work with stable coins like Circle, USDC, to be able to make sure that transfer of assets or transfer of um, of, of, of uh, currencies can be easy. If you look at it, come on, um, this MasterCard, Visa, all of these people are jumping onto blockchain uh, technology right now. PayPal has to be connected to, to, um, um, to, to, to cryptocurrencies. So as you can see, the financial sector is all is really jumping on board, and this is not some it's something we're about to embrace, but we have to be really careful exactly what we're using it for. Okay, right, Gameli Maudo, cybersecurity specialist. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you so much.